Hey, what is going on you guys, and in today's video, I'm going to be bringing you a $400 PC build featuring the new RX 560. So I want to get right into this build with the case, and this time we went with the Roseville FPM-01, like I have done in the past, and I went with this one because it was $21 and we really had to save every little dollar that we could and put it towards the GPU in this build. But like I said in the past, it's an excellent budget case, the quality is decent, it's not outstanding, but the metal isn't cheap either. It's USB 3 and it's relatively small compared to other micro ATX cases, so if you're into a smaller form factor, it's an excellent way to go. Now typically when it comes to the power supplies in these budget builds I really go with the EVGA ones, except this time I decided to go with this Thermaltake offering that was on Amazon, and it's a 500 watt power supply, it comes in at $35 as of now. It includes two 6 plus 2 pin connectors, it is also non-modular like most others in this class. But one of the big bonuses of this one is it has a 5 year warranty, which is really solid for such a budget oriented part, so you really know that it's gonna last. And I'm also going to link a second alternative 430 watt power supply in the description like I usually do in case this one goes out of stock or the price changes. And right now it comes in at $30, but overall both are excellent options. 430 to 500 watts isn't going to really make a big difference unless you plan on upgrading the graphics card later down the line. But both power supplies are good options, so let's get on with it. So now usually with the motherboard, I usually just get the cheapest offering for that price. However, I did go with a slightly more expensive option, and that would be the MSI Gaming 1151 motherboard. And the reason I did that is just pure overall build quality and aesthetics. Now this board looks amazing, it has metal sockets for the GPU, and it's really going to give that premium feel to such a low-end budget system. And I figured $10 for a way higher quality board is just a no-brainer. Now it supports up to 2400 MHz RAM, but that's not a big deal considering we're not going to be throwing in crazy high speed RAM anyway with this build. But again, there's no special features, it's just overall build quality and aesthetics with this one. And I will as always link an alternate motherboard in the description for those of you who are really on the tightest of a budget and just need to spend as less as possible. And now like always, for every budget system, I use the Western Digital Caviar Blue 1TB 7200 RPM hard drive, and that's because it comes in at $50 and it's easily the best hard drive at this price range. What more can you ask for honestly? It's a 1TB hard drive, it comes in at 50 bucks. there's nothing to complain about. It's built to last, and for a system like this, it's fine and it's going to store many games for you. Now almost as predictable as the hard drive is the processor, and of course I went with the G4560 again, and that's because for this price range there is zero competition right now, and I would go with the i3, however everybody knows that the G4560 is equal in performance to an i3-6100. The real world difference is so minimal it is not worth the extra $40 to $50 that you actually have to pay to get the i3. So as of now, the G4560 is the best budget CPU, hands down, nothing comes close, and I am glad to put it in any build. It is on par with an i5-2400 if you're familiar with that CPU, but it's going to max out any games, and it's going to work up with a graphics card all the way up to, I would say, a GTX 1060 until you really start to notice any bottlenecking. But again, it's an excellent budget CPU. Now to complement that CPU, we went with some cheapo crucial RAM, 8GB of 2133MHz RAM. I went with an 8GB stick, you can go to 4GB sticks, it's really up to you. I just go with the 8GB sticks for future upgradability so you can add in more RAM in the future. But there's really nothing to say, it's some cheapo heatsinkless RAM, but Crucial makes solid memory, and it's really not going to give you any performance difference whatsoever if you were to get faster RAM anyway. So for this build, this cheap RAM was perfect. And now for the icing on the cake, with the GPU I went with the RX 560 and I was really excited to see this GPU come out because there was no reason to buy the RX 460 over the GTX 1050 but now there's some more competition and they're like dead equal GPUs. So there's going to be the GTX 1050 in the description and RX 560 in the description. Just get whatever card you like more, they are both identical in terms of performance and they are both solid contenders for the $100 price range. 
So in the very end, depending on which parts you go with and pricing at the time, the total cost for this build is going to be anywhere between $375 and $425. That's a pretty good margin of error, so just pick what parts you want. It, no matter what you go with, you're going to get solid performance, and this build is going to play any game out there at 1080p, 60fps, medium settings. It's a really solid entry level build for someone who's moving away from consoles or is just building their first gaming PC and it's really going to suit them very well and you're going to play any game out there at a really solid frame rate for a really solid price. And as always, if you liked today's video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Drop a comment on what your thoughts were. And if you want to see more PC build videos like this one, be sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Yeah.